Hi, I'm Colin, and today we're going to be going over the basics of building a retaining wall, as well as some tips and tricks. Let's get started. So as you can tell, we already excavated for this wall. Uh, your depth of excavation can vary for um, how tall your wall entirely will be and how much gravel base and how tall the wall block is. Um, there's a few variables there. Uh, today, we excavated about 12 inches for this retaining wall. Um, and the reason we excavated 12 inches is because typically we're gonna recommend at least six inches of compacted gravel base and um, at least six inches of embedment of a wall block. So we're gonna start putting in our base material and I'm gonna be using some three quarter minus road base. Uh, this is sort of the spec gravel for most retaining wall applications. So we've put our gravel in in two inch lifts because that's all that this compactor is rated for is to be able to do two inch lifts of gravel to get the proper compaction. Um, and we're about to compact our final lift right now bringing us up to about six inches of gravel. So after we've got our base completely compacted and to the proper depth of where we want it, um, one preventative measure that you should think about doing for your retaining wall um, is some filter fabric. So what you do with this filter fabric is we're going to tack it up to the back of this wall and it's going to be preventing the dirt from migrating into our gravel base, which can promote settling, which we don't want that. So after we tack it up and we've built the wall, we're going to untack it and fold it back over the base to prevent any topsoil we put on top of the wall from also migrating into the gravel. Another preventative measure to consider when building a retaining wall is some perforated pipe. Um, this is for if there's an excess amount of drainage in the back of your wall. Uh, all you have to do is run it down at a grade um, towards the back of your wall and the maximum for each one piece of pipe is 50 foot. The type of block we're going to be using for this wall today is called Murata wall. And Murata wall is unique because it comes in basically two different blocks. So you have a Murata variable which has no lip and a Murata standard which has a lip. The perk of having no lip is that when you're setting your base course you don't have to break off the lip or dig a trench for your lip. You can just set it on the base flat. Um, your typical 6x16 manor stone is going to come with a lip um, and the only inconvenience in that is that you have to break it off. Let's take a hammer or a mallet and chip off the lip as clean as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to be putting it in gravel. You want to make sure you have a string line up to use as a reference for straight as well as it's also a good quick reference for level. Um, when I set wall blocks, I always like to make sure I have a trowel with me. That way, if I have to minor scrape or add some gravel, um, you can do that with the trowel instead of having to get up and use a shovel. Um, and a good short level and a good long level, that way you can check both ways of level throughout the process. We brought our gravel up to four inches, which is easy to remember for these type of blocks because they're eight inches, so you basically backfill a half a block at a time, um, and then this way it'll give us the proper compaction with this size of compactor. With GeoGrid only being in six foot widths, occasionally you run into instances where you have to overlap it for uh, overlap for curves, radiuses as well. So if you do have to overlap it, it's just a straightforward wall like this. What you'd want to do is establish how much overlap you're going to have, which in this situation is only about oh, four to six inches. And what you want to do is unfold this, and you're going to cover this area with gravel where it's going to overlap because you can't have grid to grid. You have to have some gravel in between in order to have some friction and some traction for the wall. So after you've placed grid on top of your base course of wall, um, every block you would use after the base course is Murata Standard. Murata Standard is unique because it has an, a lip which gives you a one inch setback and is used as an alignment tab for each course of wall afterwards. So 
So we've capped off our wall with some Murata Capello caps, um, and then we're going to do our backfill, whether it's bark dust, decorative rock, or some topsoil. Um, and after that, you're left with a beautiful, stable retaining wall system.